Okay, we are live now. Oh, this is live? Yes. Oh, okay, it's going to be live. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um... Wait, so everybody is watching me right yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. That's wonderful. Yes, Hi, sir. everybody. Hi. Salah, you can now introduce yourself. How are you? So, what do you want Umuchu writers? Yes, yes. I greet you all. What do you want, want me to talk about? Yes, sir. We want you to huh? introduce, introduce yourself first of all. What is it? We want you to introduce yourself first of all. Introduce yourself first of all. Well, you know, everybody pretty much knows me by now. So, <laughs> introduction is no longer necessary. But for those of them who are seeing me for the first time, my name is Aloy Ijmanko. I'm the special counsel to the indigenous people of Biafra and Mazen and the Kano. I'm proudly so. Okay, sir. Um, regarding the court case, court case today of um, Mazen mm. and the Kano, mm. we would like you to talk about uh, it. Talk about it and anyway. tell us what you think about the uh, for, uh, the the hearing, both uh, from the judge side to the um, counsel side. Okay. Well, I understand. Um, it's a very important topic to talk about, but I'll digress a little. I beg your indulgence to talk about a developing story, something that uh, happened yesterday. There was an affidavit filed by the Attorney General of Kenya on the 10th of February before the Kenyan High Court, uh, before which uh, Mazin Nandekano had brought a legal action over this extraordinary rendition. So finally, we have the government of Kenya through an affidavit drawn up and filed by the Attorney General of Kenya, um, stating clearly, without any equivocation, that there was no record of departure of Mazin Nandekano from Kenya from when he entered Kenya last, on the 12th of May last year. So this is the clearest confirmation yet beyond media razzmatazz. This is now inside the record of the court of Kenya, that the Kenyan government is on record with, with such significant denial. So you can say that Nigeria has finally been thrown under the bus by Kenya. This denial, whether true or not, makes the case of extraordinary rendition of Mazin and the Kano much stronger than it was before. That's number one. Number two, it has created a panoply of possible criminal violations that will ensue <coughs> on grounds of the anti-torture legislation of Nigeria and the United Nations Convention Against uh, Torture. And of course, laws of Kenya. So right now, you're looking at a situation where um, criminal indictments may lie against those people that participated directly or indirectly in the abduction, unlawful imprisonment, disappearance, torture, and the ultimate rendition of Mazin and the Kano to Nigeria. So, why we were uh, hit at the phone, why we were previously talking about extraordinary rendition as a barrier to his prosecution in the Abuja criminal matter that is pending. We are now talking about a situation where you have very serious crimes committed within the domestic laws of Kenya, domestic laws of Nigeria, like I mentioned before, Nigeria has a law prohibiting torture, and within the uh, canons of international law. So these criminal uh, proceedings will have to be activated. We are lawyers. So we are going to pursue this to the hilt. We are trying to pursue the path of justice. So within Kenyan national jurisdiction and Nigerian national jurisdiction and the international arena, you can expect that there is going to be um, a levying of sort of myriad criminal indictments to follow what happened. It was a very terrible thing. Someone entered and we have it on good authority. Kenyan immigration records still indicate that Mazin and the Kano is still in Kenya. If you recall, sometime in July, late July to early August, I authored an article. The title was that Mazin and the Kano is still technically in Kenya. So as of 10th February through this affidavit drawn up by the Attorney General of Kenya, that has just been confirmed. So I'm using this opportunity because I'm sure somewhere along the line the British authorities will stumble on this information. So it opens a new vista 
of diplomatic interventions by Britain that has the right, based on the nationality, British nationality of Mazin Namnekan, Britain now has a clearer right to demand of the Kenyan government. What happened to Her Majesty's subject, Her Majesty's citizen, who entered your country on 12th May 2021, but then suddenly found himself in Nigeria? I think a lot of questions will have to be answered here diplomatically and criminally. That is a very, very important development in the case. He makes the countervailing motions that have been brought before the Abuja High Court stronger. Of course, it adds a little bit of muscle to the recent judgment of the Abia State High Court. And I'm happy uh, to know today, even though that I was excluded from inside the court, that is another story for another day, but I'm happy to have learned from social media early enough where I was uh, cooling off outside that uh, the lead counsel, the, the Leonard Silk, Michael Sokome, raised the issue of extraordinary rendition as a barrier to the continued or further prosecution of Mazin and the Kano. Anybody will recall that I raised this issue as of early July last year. The only regret I have, quite honestly, is that this issue was not raised as of July. It was ripe as of July. It's being raised late in the day, but it's okay. The um, end justifies the means. Uh, it has been raised, it has been raised. And that was what I meant at the time when I said there is going to be trial within trial. So before the federal government can get to actually put it in Marzin Namnekano up for trial, they have to cross that barrier, telling the court that Marzin Kano was intercepted is not enough. Interception is unknown to law as a mode of bringing a foreign fugitive pro uh, suspect or a, a fugitive suspect found in a foreign country to the country of supposed or purported jurisdiction. There is nothing like interception known to either international law or municipal law. What is known to international law is extradition. So the application that was moved today by uh, Michael Zuckerman pivoting on rendition has opened the door for the federal government to come in and explain to this court how they managed to bring Mazin Namdekano before the court. That barrier, that bridge, has to be crossed before any trial, any proper trial can ensue. Thank you. All right, sir. Um, with, the de uh, with the current development coming from Kenya, do you think that uh, the Kenyan government have escaped the consequences of the extradition of Mazin Namdekano? Well, at least they are denying it on record. The, um, court case in Kenya is making its way uh, through the system, you know, but it's a constitutional action, it's a civil action, but this very affidavit, this latest affidavit has opened a new avenue for a new action that is going to be grounded on criminal violations. So if Nigeria went rogue, went into Kenya and violated the territorial integrity of Kenya, it's for Kenya to say clearly that that's what happened. But you see, it beats the imagination. It's quite unbelievable, incredible, that one nation will go to another with a private jet, take someone and exit the international airport of that nation without any late or hindrance. That is very hard to believe. But the whole truth, I think, will only be unraveled if some kind of criminal investigation is open. The details of that, I cannot get into the details on camera. Okay, so, um, um, towards the next upcoming case of Mass Namdekan, do you think there is anything we can do, uh, your legal team can do within these states that uh, and the ruling, the final ruling will be heard? Do you think there's any other uh, application that, that should be filed in the courts uh, on this um, um, Let's yes, yes. yes. Well, anyway, you see, um, we are going always going back to the drawing board. Every a new development leads to a rethinking of the strategies uh, for defending him. 
before the arbitral court. You raise a very important point that will come into consideration. But I think the next um, point of action for us is to see how his bail is going to be reinstated and a new bail approved for him by the court. We believe that he's qualified for bail right now that we have a consideration, a determination by a court of competent jurisdiction, but it, that what happened in 2017 that, got, that uh, brought him or compelled him not to attend court in 2017 was not his fault, but the fault of the federal government. So it used to be that Martin Malikan was the bad guy, he jumped bail. But right now, with the pronouncement of the Abia High Court, it is the federal government that is the bad guy. They are the ones that made him to jump bail. So I don't think any court should allow them to benefit from their own wrongdoing. That will be inequitable. That's our position. And right, that, sir. I think, can ground an application to okay, consider him sir. for bail on liberal conditions. Okay, sir. Um, let's go back to the Umoya High Court uh, ruling. Um, uh, our people are meant to ask you, have the um, federal government remitted the one billion naira that was awarded? <laughs> well, anyway, first of all, the federal government has not appealed the ruling. A lot of people were wondering if I have received any notice of appeal. I'm seizing this opportunity to say that I haven't. I don't mind. The federal government has the right to appeal. I hope they won't because it's a very good judgment. Um, well, we don't have the one billion yet. If we had the one billion, it's a very hefty sum of money. I think everybody would pretty much know about it uh, without asking me about it. But that one billion is not really the issue. The issue is to clear Mazi's name, to clear Onion Do's name. It wasn't a question of money. There's no amount of money that can ever qualify. As a matter of fact, I regard the other two pronouncements by the judge as more valuable than the one billion. The other one that required the federal government to apologize to him and publish the apology in national dailies. And the other one that recommended to the federal government to pursue the part of peaceful political solution to this matter of safe determination for Biafras. It's not a matter for tough law enforcement. It's not a matter for arrest, prosecution, rendition. That's what the court seems to be saying. That's more, that is far more important than the one, one billion naira. Nothing can ever compensate for the emotional trauma, psychological and physical damages that we have brought upon this family and upon Mazi and his parents and the 28 people who lost their lives on that ill-fated day or ill-fated period of between 10 September to 14 September 2017. No amount of money can ever recompense or compensate or remedy the terrible situation that was created. I think the victory will lie in the federal government having a full policy somersault and telling itself, we have been wrong all along. What we need to do in this situation is to call everybody to the table and seek political solutions to this. That IPOB and members of IPOB are Mazin and Nekano are not criminals, but people who are genuinely agitated about the injustices in the system, which can only be addressed through dialogue, not tough law enforcement tactics. Okay, so knowing fully well that millions of Biafrans hope on um, IPOB legates in which you are part of, what, uh, what are the encouraging words you would tell them at this point in time? Oh, well, the, the, what I can tell you is this. Listen, I came into the picture uh, in late 2017. Um, I was called upon to represent IPOB and Mazin Nandekano when he was missing after the sem September uh, 17, 2017 attack. I had contact with his family members and they brought me into play. So I want people to understand that from that late 2017 to now, I have two victories under my belt. There was a victory I won at the continental level. I'm not going to the detail, you couldn't do the details of that victory because we are forbidden to do so through a certain article. That decision is a continental decision and it's not supposed to be discussed in detail. That's one victory. And there's a lot of assurance in the, that very decision 
that affects backwards adversely the, the declaration in nigeria that ipob is a terrorist group and the proscription and everything that has happened to members of ipob and mazin and Kano since august 2015 was condemned by that decision if that decision was implemented as we expected to the letter Martin and the Khan would not be in detention right now. A lot of IPOB members wouldn't have been in detention. Those that died wouldn't have died. So I'm seizing this opportunity to call on the federal government. You are aware of the decision. A letter was written. The Attorney General is aware. The President is aware. The Foreign Minister is aware. I'm calling on you people to implement that decision because Nigeria is a treaty member of the continental body, the international body that took this decision, is very roguish, very irresponsible for a nation, any nation that signed a treaty not to, uh, to consider itself not bound by the letters and spirit of that treaty simply because a decision has been taken that that nation is in, is in breach or violation of provisions of that treaty is very irresponsible and i'm not i'm not missing words in saying it so nigeria needs to expect or demonstrate responsibility of a state by implementing that decision that was taken internationally that is one victory that i got and i'm very proud of it and i think members of ipob need to be comforted that an international body listening to their cry and the devil fell in their favor that they won. Then the second one under my belt and under your belt, I dedicate everything to the members of IPOB to Masin Nandikan is the Abia decision of 19th January. That's a second victory. If you if Masin Nandekano did something wrong in 2017, why would a competent court turn around and say no, he didn't do anything wrong? That is the federal government that did something wrong. So you have to think about that at individual levels, at your individual levels, as members of IPOB. Of course, I will encourage you to be law abiding. But what the system seems to be saying, the domestic court here, that domestic decision from ADSC and the one from the International Tribunal, appear to be saying is that self determination is not a crime. That is what it said, pure and simple. Because if Nandekan was engaged in a criminal enterprise, the Abia High Court would not have agreed with the proposition that the federal government's armed, uh, controlled armed forces went to his house to exterminate, to terminate his life, to borrow the language of the court. So um, while I encourage members of IPOB to be law abiding, I would not, as a lawyer in good conscience, encourage any member of IPOB or in fact any Nigerian to deny himself his fundamental human rights. You have a right to protest. You have the right to disagree with your government. You have to, the right to demand better governance. You have the right to hold the political opinion of self-determination. Same determination is a political opinion, and Chapter 4 of the Nigerian Constitution protects political opinion. So I'm not going to be here to tell anybody to be a wimp, to be a wimp and cowardly about his rights. As a lawyer, I will encourage you to be law-abiding, but don't sleep over your rights. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, sir. sir. It's my pleasure.